Now let's talk about that first five years of being a pastor, what you wish someone had told you. I was 28 years old when Layla and I accepted responsibility to pastor a congregation of 17 people in rural Southwest Virginia. The parsonage needed a facelift and the cinder block building was an ugly embarrassment in the community. No one sat down with me and did an orientation. I was given a report book and instructed to mail monthly statistics and other notes to state and general headquarters. In addition, I was required to send a monthly personal report of sermons preached, though nobody ever told me what a sermon was, number saved, number baptized, etc. To this day, I still don't know how to answer some of those questions. I was the son of a pastor, but had never attended an elders meeting. It took time to learn that even in the most humble circumstances, an elders meeting needs dignity and format a printed agenda, comfortable chairs, a table, some water, maybe something to nibble on. A pastor of a church of about 500 congregants was nationally famous or popular. Only a few miles from where I was pastoring, he hosted a meeting. I timidly introduced myself and he said, nice to meet you and here's our latest magazine and hand me a slick magazine that probably cost more to print than our monthly budget. I was so chagrined, I walked away, decided I would never ask anybody to help me again, forget it all. My decision was a very, very, very terrible mistake. Uh, I wish I had had somebody tell me, you need to seek counsel from the right people. I thought preaching would surely be the salvation of the situation of the congregation. And lots of time was spent to develop sermons that would impact people for a whole month for sure. It took me a while to learn that the best of sermons might last a few days, but likely be forgotten within hours. It took me a lot longer to learn that my life and character in the community was a sermon louder and more powerful than what I said in the pulpit. I wish someone had told me that sermons are only a small part, maybe 20% of pastoring. Administration's about 80%. I wish someone had told me that folks liking a sermon does not mean that the sermon helped them. <laughs> Developing disciples, organizing worship services, and teaching biblical and practical classes, connecting with community leaders, caring for personal family, and demonstrating care for others are the foundation for what happens in the pulpit. I wish someone had told me that pastoring is like gardening. Plow, plant, pull weeds, water, hope, and pray for a harvest, but know that when personal efforts are spent, the rest is up to the Holy Spirit. I determined to visit every parishioner on a regular basis, visit every patient in the hospital or sick at home, and listen to every problem. I sat for long hours in hospitals with family and patients. I wish someone had told me that being a pastor is not babysitting. I wish someone had told me that earning a reputation as a caring pastor is not the same as being a good shepherd. It was difficult for me to learn that time can be wasted or misappropriated. Doing the mundane can prevent investing in ministry that could yield far greater fruit, more souls, more disciples, and a healthier church body. I learned to take persons with me to hospitals and other care facilities, homes, witnessing, etc. In time, these persons were released to do ministry I'd been doing. In essence, the congregation matured, leaders multiplied, and congregants appreciated pastoral leadership. I began pastoring with love and a commitment to serve. I wanted to take all the load I could off of parishioners of facilities and ministry. I wish someone had told me that folks who love Jesus love to serve. I wish someone had told me that I was denying others the joy of serving. I wish someone had helped me to others understand that others love Jesus as much as I do. Our town was small. I would see people when they not see me. I was not sneaky, just busy in the community. Sometimes I saw congregants doing things or wearing or not wearing what would be consistent with their Christian testimony. I had chest pains at age 32 because I carried that burden personally. I wish someone had told me that other people's weaknesses were not my fault or an indictment of my pastoral role. God gave me instructions to resign the pastorate and return to school. He knew I needed to learn more. I believe he saved my life. Layla and I listened, read, and introduced programs and ministries at Covenant Church. The church did grow in attendance, we did improve properties. I wish someone had told me that most of what we did with programs and ministries is experimental and not biblically required.
and that apple butter and fall festival and a whole lots of other things we do are just simply sacred cows that we need to kill. We need to take them out and bury them. I say quiet burial at night and don't tell anybody where you buried it. Just don't talk about it anymore. I listen to preachers tell about turning off phones, retreating and locking doors, not coming out until Hebrew, Greek, Bible study and prayer help them prepare their Sunday sermon. I confess I was working on my sermon until I was in the pulpit and to this day never felt like I completed a sermon even after the benediction and until now. I wish an older and a wiser minister had helped me to understand that sermons come from living with people, life experiences, listening to the Holy Spirit, studying every day and asking the Holy Spirit to guide thoughts, even to giving us the ability to say some things in the pulpit that we're not prepared for when the Holy Spirit gives that moment and that we would understand we must teach congregants how to serve and fulfill the Great Commission. If our sermons are not helping people to fulfill the Great Commission, we're just not getting it done. If we're not making disciples, then we are on the wrong track, busy but on the wrong track. 